Hello everybody. Today I am starting module 7 and this is my first lecture of this module 7. We are discussing continuous system and various classes of problems such as torsion of a bar, axial vibration of a bar, transverse vibration of string and also the flexural vibration of the beam we have considered. Now you have got the idea how to solve a continuous system uh, analytically when you can completely or exactly you know the, the model properties that means uh, the mode shapes and natural frequency if available or it can be solved uh, by uh, closed form solution by applying the boundary condition then it is possible to apply the mode supervision technique to the continuous system and technique is same in all classes of problems that we have considered in vibration of continuous system. Now today I would like to discuss how to proceed in a problem where you will get a combination of continuous and num parameter system. For example you have a beam on which several concentrated masses are acting. For example, an aircraft wing where the fuel tank is located on the aircraft wing. As a result of this, the vibration characteristics of the aircraft wing will vary depending on the uh, fuel content in the tank. For empty condition, there will be one natural frequency and when the tank is full or partially full, there will be other value of natural frequencies. So that is uh, important to know to avoid many uh, uh, dynamic failures such as resonance, flutter, etc. in the problems that we encountered in the practical field where the dynamic excitation is unavoidable. Now here I am going to discuss a continuous system and lump parameter system. Lump parameter may be a simply a concentrated mass or point mass that is placed on the beam or any other uh, or plate or whatever may be. So far we are discussing one dimensional element so we will be focusing our discussion on the beam or it can be similar technique can be used for torsional vibration of the shaft or axial vibration of the bar also. Now here due to placement of the concentrated mass in uh, beam you will get there will be discontinuity in the mode shape function. So therefore one has to apply the compatibility condition at each of the point where the concentrated mass is acting and this procedure is cumbersome so that the closed form solution can be obtained but it will be very rigorous exercise. So today our discussion will be the vibration characteristics of the beam that is mainly we will focus on the natural frequency of the beam Euler Bernoulli beam I will consider in this lecture which carries multiple concentrated masses at arbitrary locations. So beam may have uh, masses not only at this suppose a cantilever beam that we have discussed earlier a mass was considered at the free end that is boundary and we have imposed the proper boundary condition. But here the location of the mass has no restriction, it can be placed anywhere. Now suppose a cantilever beam which has distributed parameters such as mass, modulus of elasticity that is material properties are distributed along the length of the beam. I is the moment of inertia of the beam. You can see that mass at the boundary is placed. So it can be utilized to form the boundary value problem and the solution of the boundary value problem is known to us. For example, the displacement of cantilever beam at any location can be approximated or can be written as this where phi Ix is the mode shape function and eta i 
t is a time dependent generalized coordinate and summation can go up to infinity. For such problems, we can get the exact solution after getting this solution of phi x as a1 cos hyperbolic lambda x plus a2 sin hyperbolic lambda x and a3 cos lambda x plus a4 sin lambda x where lambda is related to the natural frequency. For example, this uh, for this beam here for constant EI lambda to the power 4 is nothing but m omega square by EI. So, these constants of integration can be evaluated by applying the boundary condition. What are the boundary condition? At x is equal to 0 that is at the fixed end you are seeing here the fixed end x is equal to 0. Here our displacement is 0 at any instant of time and slope is also 0. So, del y by del x is 0 as well as the displacement y is 0. But at x is equal to L where a concentrated mass is placed there you will get if there is no concentrated mass you will get a free condition for which the bending moment and shear force is 0. But due to the uh, uh, placement of the concentrated mass at the boundary you will get here the bending moment is 0 but the inertial reaction of this mass will be balanced by the shear force. So, shear force at the end of the beam is E i del cube y by del x cube evaluated at x is equal to L at any time t is equal to minus m del square y by del t square into y L t at length at x is equal to L at time t. So, for this mass the boundary condition can be applied position of mass the boundary condition can be applied and we still get a closed form solution. The closed form solution was given by Karnovsky and Libet in 2000 in his famous book that formulas for structural dynamics. Here you will get the mass ratio plays an important part 1 by L alpha. Alpha is the mass ratio. So, what is alpha? Alpha is nothing but the concentrated mass divided by ml. This is the ratio of the concentrated mass to the total beam mass where l is the length of the beam. Okay. So, now uh, several conclusion can be drawn from this expression that we have discussed earlier also but for refreshing it I am telling. For special cases where m is 0 there is no concentrated mass you are getting the transcendental equation as 1 plus cos hyperbolic lambda l cos lambda l. So, that is the transcendental equation or frequency equation for a cantilever beam where at the tip there is uh, no concentrated mass. So, tip is free and the mode shape function is given by this. So, if m is very high for example, the mass ratio increases, the mass of the, the extra mass that you have placed is very high in comparison to the beam mass, then the equation for determining frequency becomes 10 lambda L equal to 10 hyperbolic lambda L and this equation is similar to the equation that was given for a beam which has one end fixed and other end simply supported or pin. So, that means for a prop cantilever the characteristic equation for determining the natural frequency is 10 lambda L equal to 10 hyperbolic lambda L. Now, the effect of uh, mass ratio can be investigated here. In the x axis there is uh, mass uh, ratio alpha is placed here and here also it is alpha. So, first graph is uh, for fundamental mode of vibration that is the first mode and this graph is also as per the publication given by Karnovsky and Libet. So, you can see that uh, this the 
natural frequency parameter say lambda l decreases gradually with the increase of mass at the tip for both the frequencies observed here first and second. However, you will see the decrease of natural frequency is fast but here the decrease of natural frequency is not so fast and you will see that second natural frequency does not decrease so much with the increase of mass at the free end uh, when alpha is very high. So that suggests the first natural frequency is highly affected by the concentrated mass and uh, the graph suggests that it has a decreasing trend with the increase of concentrated mass. Okay. Now what happens when the beam is carrying several concentrated mass? So that problem I want to address. So for example, a cantilever beam is there, tip mass is there, in addition there are other masses are also there. So in that condition, how to proceed? To find the natural frequency of vibration. Now here you can see concentrated masses imposes discontinuity in the elastic curve of this uh, beam and therefore if you solve for this part and this part separately and then matching the condition of displacement and slope at the common point then you will be able to get the expression for mode shape in different segment. So that will be a rigorous procedure and therefore a research work has been done to ease the calculation procedure at least for practical purpose for design purpose so that readily one can get an expression for the natural frequency for number of concentrated masses placed on the uh, beam. So therefore we will discuss here a problem. I have shown here a cantilever beam but it is not restricted to only cantilever beam any boundary condition can be imposed. However, the Euler Bernoulli beam condition is assumed. The beam in figure carries p number of masses. You can see here the mass 1, mass 2 up to mass p. So p number of masses are placed at different location. Here it is x1, it is x2 x p minus 1 etc. So of course in the cantilever beam there is no question of uh, symmetrically placed mass but because the support conditions are not symmetrical. But in case of say fixed fixed beam or free free beam it is not necessary to place the mass at the symmetrical position. This uh, formulation is valid or not restricted to any placement of the masses along the beam length. So semi-analytical method that is proposed by U and Lin will be used here. So let us start with the differential equation of motion. Differential equation is EI del 4 y by del x 4 plus m del square y by del t square plus c del y by del t equal to f x t. You can easily remember that this is the elastic part and this is the inertia part and this is the damping and this is external excitation. So for the sake of uh, this simplicity because the damping does not alter the natural frequency significantly. So effect of structural damping that is the material damping is very less on the natural frequencies that we have seen that damp natural frequency is equal to undamped natural frequency multiplied by a factor and this factor is root over 1 minus j square where j is the damping ratio. Generally damping ratio for the material that we are using in engineering uh, practice is very small it is 2 percent, 1 percent, maximum 5 percent in concrete it is 5 percent and steel even it is 1 or less than 1 is also found. So here the damp natural frequency is very low compared to this uh, because of damping is very low 
dam natural frequency is approximately equal to undamped natural frequency. So there will be not much difference of the damped natural frequency and undamped natural frequency. So since our intention is to find the natural frequency of the vibration of the Euler Bernoulli beam subjected to number of concentrated masses at any arbitrary location. So for solving such problem let us take c is equal to 0. So damping is taken negligible here. So that means this term is not considered in this formulation. But the fxt the external force is considered as an inertial reaction produced by the concentrated masses. So therefore this equation is rearranged as ei del 4 y by del x 4 plus m del square y by del t square equal to minus summation j equal to 1 to p m j del square y by del t square direct delta x minus x j. So here this symbol is direct delta. The meaning of which is discussed in many earlier classes but one important property of direct delta function is that if phi is a function and it is multiplied by direct delta function say x1 say any uh, number argument is x minus x1 and it is integrating integrated between any limit minus infinity to plus infinity the value will generate a function evaluated at x is equal to x1 so that simple property of the direct delta function makes such problem very attractive so using this uh, fxt as a summation of inertial reaction of the different masses m1 m2 etc up to mp we are now writing this term as summation of j is equal to 1 to p mj del square y by del t square into direct delta argument is x minus xj okay we will propose a method that is already discussed in uh, un lin paper this paper is published in very reported journal which publishes paper on the topics related to vibration and the name of the journal is journal of sound and vibration it is published in 1990 and author is Wu and Lin. The topic of the paper or title of the paper was free vibration analysis of a uniform cantilever beam with point masses by an analytical and numerical combined method. Okay. So this uh, paper the result that are given is for uniform cantilever beam. but it is seen this method is general. So it is not restricted only the uniform cantilever beam for any type of beam where the support conditions are properly defined you can use this method. Now what is the salient features of this method? Salient features of this method is that we use the exact mode shape of the beam that is found where there was no concentrated mass. So without uh, having any concentrated mass on the beam, we know what is phi x for the cantilever beam or any kind of beam. So for example, it is simply supported beam. So we know that this mode shape function is a sine function, sine n pi x by L. Of course, some coefficient will be there, which depends on the normalization procedure. Now here you can see the S is an index. So it uh, indicates the mode number S. So it may vary from 1 to infinity. And omega S is the natural frequency of the beam at the sth mode. Now remember that omega S is the angular frequency that is unit is radian per second. So these two terms or parameters we have taken for the uh, beam where there is no concentrated mass. Now 
we can write the displacement of the beam as summation of the modes product of the summation of the mode shape function and the generalized coordinate eta i t. So, this series is given here y x t equal to summation i is equal to 1 to infinity phi i x eta i t. So, i s varies from 1 to n. So, here index is s, but any index can be taken, there is no restriction. You can take j, then here you have to write j here you have to write j or you can write this uh, any other index which uh, uh, indicates this summation terms ok. So, substituting this series in this differential equation just substitute it we have uh, now obtained this summation s is equal to 1 to infinity within bracket e i del 4 phi i s divided by del x to the power 4 eta s t plus m phi s uh, at x is a function of x and eta s double dot t because we are taking here this uh, second derivative of this uh, y with respect to time. So, therefore, double dot appears. Now, on the right hand side it is becoming term like j is equal to 1 to p m j again after placing y here that series here you are getting again a summation s is equal to 1 to n phi s direct delta x minus x j eta s double dot t. Now, you remember here that x j is the position of the jth mass. So, because it is under the summation, so the it will uh, as number of masses increases the summation terms also will increase and eta s t double dot t is the acceleration term of the generalized coordinate that is the second derivative of the generalized coordinate ok. Now, this term is this that we have discussed now let us decouple it, but you will find interestingly it cannot be completely decoupled because of presence of com concentrated mass the inertia term will show the presence of other coordinates, but the stiffness term will be completely decoupled. So, let us see how it can be done. Now, multiply each side by phi r x. So, r is another mode number. So, s is equal to not r and then integrating over the beam length we get due to orthogonality properties of the mode and also due to property of the direct delta function. Direct delta function property I have discussed earlier. Orthogonality condition will give you this uh, this E i del 4 phi i del x 4 equal to you can get it omega square m i and phi i x. So, this term you will get at the ith mode of free vibration that motion is harmonic. So, based on that you get and you will also get the orthogonality condition m phi i x where m is the mass of the beam which is assumed constant here phi j x d x integrated over the length of the beam equal to 0 if i is equal to not j, but if i is equal to j then this right hand term is not 0 it will give some number and this is called generalized mass. Now, you can see that this term when it is present here then we will get a orthogonality relationship that can be applied. So, after applying the orthogonality relationship here you will get eta r double dot t plus again here the this uh, term you will again be able to apply the orthogonality conditions. So, you will get this omega r square eta r t. So, this term you will get actually in this case the inertia case and here this term the acceleration term will come. So, it shows the decoupling of the left hand side, 
but when you go to the right hand side you will get a terms which are not only one independent coordinate. So, here you are getting minus 1 by m bar r. So, m bar r is the generalized mass m bar r we defined as m r square x dx and it is taken as 1 when the mode shape is normalized with the respect of mode shape is normalized with respect to beam mass per unit length. So, if I take this strategy then the value of m r is 1. So, based on that you will get here and now here we can take m r is equal to 1. So, now the equation of motion is simply written n r double dot t plus omega r square eta r t eta r double dot t that is the generalized coordinate is the acceleration term ok omega r square eta r t equal to q r r because this term cannot be decoupled of course m r r can be taken as 1 ok because of this uh, mass normalized mode shape. But here we take uh, this term as q r r because with only independent coordinate eta r it cannot be written. So, therefore, we are getting this uh, term if I transfer this q r r actually q r r will be nothing but this quantity q r r are this. So, in the earlier slide that q r r is the generalized force now with the m dashed bar as 1 you will get this equal to j p m j phi r x j then uh, you will get this phi s x j eta double dot s s is equal to 1 to n. Here you can see the summation with mode numbers. So, n is the number of modes that is taken because it is not the exact method. So, we are not taking an infinite number of modes. So, n is the number of modes that is taken into consideration, but here you can see the summation is with the number of concentrated mass. So, number of concentrated mass is p. So, summation goes 1 to p and location is also x1, x2 like that up to xp. So, this is the qr. So, this can be transferred, this term is actually qr, qrr and uh, this is equal to 1. So, 1.0. So, this can be transferred in the right hand side and we get a equation like that after transferring this q r r in the right hand side we get an equation eta r double dot t plus summation j is equal to 1 to p m j phi r x j summation s is equal to 1 to n phi s x j eta s double dot t this is with acceleration then with displacement omega r square eta r t. Now, remember that while getting this expression we use the mode shape function for the beam which does not carry any concentrated mass. So, the displacement of the beam was given by summation of mode shape of the beam without concentrated mass multiplied by generalized coordinate of the beam where there was no mass present ok. So, for a harmonic free vibration now let us assume that eta r t equal to eta bar r t equal to e to the power i omega t where omega is the natural frequency natural frequency of beam with concentrated mass. So, that is the difference. Here we are taking omega r square that is the natural frequency of the beam without concentrated mass 
and here with concentrated mass. So, this omega small omega represents natural frequency of beam without concentrated mass. Whereas, capital omega that is given here represents this natural frequency of the beam with concentrated mass. I is imaginary number. So, this term is taken because it represents the harmonic terms. Exponential i omega t represents the harmonic term. So, therefore, we in free vibration we can assume this in absence of damping. Now, substituting this here, we will get this uh, uh, substitute this uh, eta r t as uh, eta bar r t into e to the power i omega t in this whole expression. So, what I get is because of when we consider the double derivative of e to the power i omega t. So, i omega square term will come and i square you know that i is nothing but a imaginary unit which is minus 1. So, i square is minus 1 root over minus 1 i is root over minus 1. So, i square is minus 1. So, therefore, here we are getting minus omega square eta r bar plus omega r square eta r. So, that is already existing. So, we have taken here. Then here again you will get uh, when you substitute this you will get your capital omega square that will come outside the summation term and then summations are written with index s varies from 1 to n. Yes, uh, n is the mode number. So, the index s is taken to denote the summation for number of modes and j is the location of the concentrated mass. So, mass 1 is located at x 1, mass 2 is x 2 like that. So, there are p number of masses. So, the summation goes from j is equal to 1 to p and then m j phi r x j phi s x j eta s t this x argument with j comes because the property of the direct delta function. When the integration is done on the right hand side to determine the qr, qrr, we use the property of the direct delta function that you can see here. When the uh, integration is done here, okay, in this case, so in uh, everywhere you are this uh, phi r x j and phi s x j is coming because here argument is x j ok. So, this expression we have got now this expression can be further arranged omega r square minus capital omega square into eta bar r minus capital omega square summation j is equal to 1 to p summation s is equal to 1 to n m j phi r x j phi s x j eta bar s t where eta bar s t is a function of time ok. Now, this can be formulated as a standard eigenvalue problem. So, let us see what are the matrices. So, we can introduce this because this is with index r only. So, if I write in this matrix form then omega r square is appearing in a diagonal position in a matrix. So, we assume that this matrix omega square is a diagonal matrix. So, we are getting in the diagonal element the omega 1 square, omega 2 square like that up to omega n and other elements are 0. Similarly, we take a unit matrix that is uh, the diagonal elements are 1 and then the vector of mode shape phi x is given by because mode shape number varies from 1 to n. So, we are writing in a vector form phi 1 x up to phi n x phi 2 x like that up to phi n x and eta bar t this is the time dependent coordinate we are writing again in the vector form eta 1 bar up to eta bar n. So, eta is the generalized coordinate and the suffix 1 2 3 etcetera denotes the mode number. 
So, this uh, relation we want to express in this matrix form. So, therefore, we identify some matrices that can be used. So, this is our expression. So, we can now write omega square that is the diagonal matrix we get here and minus omega square this is the unit matrix and B prime. B prime matrix will be developed after carrying out this summation. So, phi j uh, phi x j it is a vector and phi x j t it is also a vector if it is say n plus 1 and it is 1 plus n. So, we will get n by n matrix and in uh, this m j p for number of masses varying from 1 to p the terms will increase, but it will be a populated matrix it will not a diagonal matrix. So, now uh, this eta bar is common in every expression. So, writing this omega square it is a diagonal matrix eta bar and omega square term we take outside capital omega square into B matrix and B matrix is nothing but your unit matrix plus B prime. So, this matrix is combined to give a matrix B matrix. So, this is can be written as omega square I divided both sides by uh, omega square, but it can also be formulated as a standard generalized eigenvalue problem and can be solved using MATLAB program, but solving manually I have taken uh, in this form so that a characteristic equation can be formed very easily. So, omega square small omega square divided by capital omega square this factor is taken here and then uh, this b is remaining here and eta bar is a common factor in this equation. Now, for non-trivial solution we know that determinant of this one possibility is that eta bar equal to 0. So, that will not uh, give the practical solution. So, for non-trivial solution we require to uh, find out the determinant of the matrix and set equal to 0 then we will be able to get the capital omega which is the eigen value of the problem that relates to the natural frequency of the beam carrying concentrated masses. So, we write as usual determinant omega square by capital omega square that is a diagonal matrix minus b. What is b? b is I matrix plus B bar B prime. So, we will see that in matrix B the diagonal term will consist of 1 plus something. So, that is due to uh, presence of uniform matrix a uh, unit matrix. So, solving this characteristic equation natural frequencies of the beam with concentrated masses that is not only single mass any number of mass you can consider. So, I will write concentrated masses can be obtained and substitution of omega s that you find in any mode say s -th mode in the above equation above equation means that equation that you get in the matrix form that equation omega square small omega square by omega square minus b these are matrix ok matrix form, but this is not diagonal, B is not a diagonal matrix, B is a populated matrix and this is of course a diagonal matrix and your eta bar equal to 0. So, when you find the omega capital omega the natural frequency of the beam carrying concentrated masses, then you can find the relative values of eta bar. So, therefore, we can now write that approximate mode shape of this beam carrying concentrated mass is nothing but phi r x equal to summation r is equal to 1 to n phi r x eta bar r. So, this is actually your mode shape of the beam 
carrying concentrated masses, but remember that it will not give the exact mode shape because of this number of modes that we have taken are limited that is n number, but with increase of higher uh, mode number it may be close to the actual mode shape. But remember that presence of concentrated masses the discontinuity does not allow a closed form solution straight forward. So therefore this method can be adopted for getting a faster solution and then which can be used for practical application. And this method is due to Yu and Lin which has been published in 1990 okay, in Journal of Sound and Vibration. Now let us discuss this uh, method with certain example. First let us see, uh, let us take a simply supported beam of span L is equal to 1 meter. Ei, the flexural rigidity of the beam 43 Newton meter square, mass per unit length of the beam is 2 kg per meter. So you can see here this total mass of the beam, total mass of the beam is 2 into 1 equal to because 1 meter is the length is 2 kg and we have taken concentrated mass here this m1 which is 1 kg. So ratio of concentrated mass m1 by ml is 0.5 that is 50 percent, 50 percent of the total mass of the beam is taken as a concentrated mass. So now and it is placed at the location L by 4 okay at the quarter span. So let us uh, find out the natural frequency of the beam but you know as you take the number of modes higher the matrix size will be also higher. So to solve manually we have taken to illustrate the method we have taken only two number of modes but this when we apply in a computer program say MATLAB you can take any number of modes by systematically generating the elements of the matrices. So first let us find the natural frequencies because we have taken two modes and it is support condition is simply supported. We take the uh, first two frequencies and it is omega 1 is the first frequency of the simply supported beam without concentrated mass. So it is pi squared root over Ei divided by ml to the power 4. m is equal to 2, l is equal to 1 and Ei is equal to 43 and pi squared is there and uh, after calculating this you will get the first natural frequency is 45.7 radian per second. Omega 2, 4 pi square root over Ei ml to the power 4 and again after putting this numerical value of Ei, M and L in this formula, we get the second natural frequency as 183.05 radian per second. Okay. So now we constitute this eigenvalue problem uh, finding this determinant. So this matrix is a diagonal matrix and B is a populated matrix. So omega square small omega square by capital omega square now we can write because this is nothing but 45.7 that we have found is square okay and this is nothing but your 183.05 square so this we can write now uh, 2094 by capital omega square and this is diagonal matrix so other diagonal element is 33507 by capital omega square and non diagonal off diagonal elements are 0. Now B matrix is because the mass is only 1 and it is placed at this location L by 4. No other location is now here specified and no other masses are specified and only we have taken 2 modes. So the size of the B matrix will be also 2. So B matrix is actually found from summation of I matrix plus B prime matrix and I matrix you know it is a unit matrix so its value is 0 1 
and b prime now contains this is the first element of b prime so b prime if i write the first one one the first element of the b prime it is m1 phi 1 square but it is evaluated because the mass is located at l by 4 so it is evaluated at l by 4 then b prime 1 2 it will be m1 only one mass is there phi 1 and only one location is there phi 2 l by 4 however this matrix is symmetrical so b prime uh, 2 1 equal to 1 2 b prime 1 2 and b prime 2 2 element will be m 1 phi 2 square l by 4 so now b matrix is plugged with the i matrix we are now getting this b matrix b prime matrix is plugged with i matrix and we are now getting this b matrix so b matrix is now here written first element is 1 plus m1 phi 1 square second element is m1 phi 1 into phi 2 of course phi 1 and phi 2 are calculated at l by 4 where the mass m1 is located if other mass was there at the other location then another term this should have been appeared here so here you see m1 phi 1 l by 4 phi 2 l by 4 so this is uh, symmetrical so b actually the diagonal term contains 1 plus something but off diagonal term is same as the matrix b prime so whatever you got here we have placed here and the diagonal term is 1 plus m1 phi 2 square l by 4 now let us see the mode shape first two mode shapes are obtained here and uh, here if i take this value say m is equal to 2 and l is equal to 1 so we are getting this factor is 1 so at l by 4 this is uh, 1 by root 2 that is 0 0.707 and at l by 1 l by 2 it is 1 okay so this distance is l by 2 and this distance is l by 4 okay in the second mode when we calculate that is uh, this is uh, actually this is also first mode so this is the calculation with respect to first mode okay now when we come to the second mode you can get this second mode has uh, value at l by 2 at 0 okay so that you should note it so second mode calculation is done and therefore b matrix is written here 1.5 0 0.707 0.7072 how the b matrix is coming b matrix is coming from this okay and uh, you can see this uh, other value of this uh, if you want to calculate this phi 2 l by 4 so uh, phi 2 l by 4 so th that means the coefficient is 1 sine 2 pi and this is x is l by 4 okay so therefore so sin l by 4 and this l is there so l l will get cancelled so sin pi by 2 so that means here the amplitude is 1 but when you calculate phi 2 at l by 2 you will get sin pi and it is 0 okay so therefore we get after putting this value the b matrix as this so our frequency determinant is 2094 divided by omega square minus 1.5 minus 0 0.707 minus uh, 0 0.707 and the diagonal element uh, at 22 that is 33507 by capital omega square minus 2 this determinant should be equated to 0. On expanding the determinant, 
we get 2094 divided by omega square minus 1.5 into 33507 divided by omega square minus 2 minus 0.5 equal to 0. So after uh, this uh, uh, term by term multiplication uh, you are getting 2094 minus 1.5 omega square into 33507 minus 2 omega square minus 0.5 omega to the power 4. So we again multiply this then uh, we get an equation in omega to the power 4. So this is simple algebra that you do here and after that you will get a characteristic equation as this 2.5 omega to the power 4 minus 5 triple 4 9 omega square plus 7016365 equal to 0. So if omega square is taken as a variable, so it is a quadratic equation so that can be solved by the standard formula. So quadratic equation here is solved omega square is equal to 54449 plus minus root over 54449 4, 4, square minus 4 into 2.5 into 7016365 divided by 2 into 2.5. So quadratic formula I think it is known to you say this is the quadratic equation equal to 0 then x is equal to minus b plus minus b square minus 4 ac divided by 2 i say. So this is used here and after calculating this omega square we get the first natural frequency 37.09 and second natural frequency 142.84. So you can see the natural frequency is dropped actually when the mass was not present the natural frequency was 45 first natural frequency was 45 and second natural frequency was 183 radian per second but here you are seeing the reduction in natural frequency due to presence of concentrated mass now let us see the effect of location of the concentrated mass let the mass 1 kg the earlier the magnitude of mass is also considered as 1 kg is located at the center of the span so if it is located at the center of the span this uh, values are phi 1 is 1 and phi 2 at l by 2 is 0 so b matrix is obtained as 1 plus m1 phi 1 square l by 2 m1 phi 1 l by 2 phi 2 l by 2 and this element is similar because it is um, you can see this uh, transpose of this matrix is same okay so therefore this other diagonal element is 1 plus m1 phi 2 square l by 2 symmetry of the matrix exists and this value after substituting this m1 and uh, this phi 1 phi 2 evaluated at l by 2 we get the b matrix as 2 0 0 1 so therefore the frequency determinant becomes 2094 divided by omega square minus 2 0 and uh, this is a diagonal matrix so this term is also 0 and other term is 33507 by omega capital omega square minus 1 and determinant is equated to 0 solving we get omega 1 is 32.35 and omega 2 is 183 now you can note here that first natural frequency is still dropped because the uh, the mid span position is a very critical location where the displacement is more whereas second mode since the mid span is a node in the second mode and you will get mode shape in the second mode where the mid span that is the 0.5 l this location as displacement is zero so therefore we get no change in the natural frequency in the second mode however with the increase of number of modes this can also be tested whether there is a change in such cases because when the node is mass is placed at the node it may not alter the corresponding natural frequency okay so if i compare the natural frequencies of the beam with single mass at two different locations uh, here ratio of the concentrated mass to total beam mass is 0.5 
we can see that at x by l by 4 both the frequencies with point mass is reducing but here we find that when the mass is located at x equal to l by 2 the second natural frequency remains almost same there is no change because the mass is located at the node point of the second mode and the first natural frequencies further drop compared to this where the mass is located at x is equal to l by 4. Now let us discuss the effect of ratio of the concentrated mass of the total beam mass. So we take here the same beam but here m1 is taken as 200 kg and m2 is taken as 2 kg. That means uh, the ratio of the concentrated mass is 0 0.01 that means the mass is very high. Ratio of the concentrated mass is uh, around uh, this, this 200 by 2. That ratio is m by ml is 100. Whereas the beam mass, total beam mass is 2. Total beam mass is only 1% of the concentrated mass. So see this data. So that will give a peculiar results because here the beam is may be considered as a massless is compared to concentrated mass that is placed at the uh, center of the span and this concentrated mass is so heavy its magnitude is 200 kg whereas total beam mass is only 2 kg so 100 times more is the concentrated mass. So here we constitute the B matrix as earlier we have done. The elements are 1 plus m1 phi 1 square, m1 phi 1 phi 2, m1 phi 1 phi 2 and other the last element is 1 plus m1 phi 2 square and you can see due to presence of heavy mass this uh, first element the B11 is 201 and other elements the one that is very negligible compared to this and this off diagonal elements are zero because mass is placed at the uh, nodal point okay so the determinant is formed 2094 by omega square minus 200 and uh, this 33507 by omega square minus 1 so eigenvalue is found as 3.32 and 183 that is eigenvalue is nothing but the first natural frequency 3.23 and the second natural frequency 183 but uh, the first natural frequency that we concentrate because this is the most critical value uh, in design critical parameter design let us check this with some approximate formula now when the beam is considered massless this is concentrated mass is too heavy compared to beam mass so in that case we can just consider that a beam a massless beam is subjected to weight here mg and deflection of the beam at the midpoint is delta is nothing but mg L cube 48 EI. So that we know from our strength of material uh, course and therefore if I want to find the stiffness of the beam because the beam is considered massless so it can be considered as a single degree of freedom system. So therefore stiffness K is uh, P by delta P is the force and here mg and delta is mg L cube into 48 EI. So the stiffness is coming here as 48 EI by L cube. This is the frequency, the omega bar. Omega bar is the natural frequency in that case, capital a small omega bar. And here we can f uh, find out as a simple approximation as omega is equal to root over k by m. Okay. But here m is the mass concentrated mass m1 because beam mass is negligible. 
and k is this. So, after substituting this, you can find that uh, Ei is 43, so 48 into 43 divided by 200 into 1 cube and it is under the root. So, the value is given as 3.21 radian per second and you recall that earlier we have found it is 3.23. So, <coughs> the approximate formula here also gives the, the value which is close to the semi-analytical value that we have found following U and Lin's method. Let us consider the effect of multiple masses. In simply supported beam, L is equal to 1 meter and mass per unit length is 2 kg per meter. Ei is 43 Newton meter square. We have placed two masses. One is at L by 4 and another at L by 2. So, let us develop the characteristic equation. Take the mode number 3. So, we find three frequencies and three mode shapes, but mode shapes will be evaluated at the location of the concentrated masses. So, we are finding omega 1 equal to 45.76, earlier we have found it, omega 2 183, omega 3 is 412. So, unit is radian per second. Then we go for finding this mode shape. You can see the first three mode shapes are given like that. So, amplitude here is 1, this is 1, this is minus 1, here it is minus 1, here it is 1 and this is 0 point. Okay. So, you are getting first three modes here and accordingly we find the mode shape phi 1 at L by 4 is this phi 2 L by 4 again it is this 1 and phi 1 L by 4 is 0.707 this is 1 by root 2 and phi 2 at L by 4 is 1 and phi 3 at L by 4 is 0 0.707 again. So, phi 1 L by 2 is 1 phi 2 at L by 2 is 0 and phi 3 at L by 2 is minus 1. So, all the values we have now obtained for the three modes at three location, at two locations. Now, we form the matrix omega square by capital omega square. This is a diagonal matrix that I have discussed earlier. So, it is now 2094 that is 45.7 whole square that is 33507 that is 183 square and this factor that is 169744 will be 412 that is the uh, uh, third natural frequency is square. So, we have written this diagonal matrix next B matrix is found. So, B prime let us first find, first find the B prime because there are three uh, two concentrated masses and three modes. So, we have to take the contribution of the modes properly. So, first mode that is mass m1 is placed at L by 4 and m2 is again placed at L by 2. So, first mode contribution is taken for the two masses and its value is 2.5. The element gives 2.5. B prime 1 2 that is m1 phi 1 phi 2 at L by 4 m2 phi 1 L by 2, phi 2 L by 2. So, this value gives 0 0.707. B prime 1 3 that is the interaction between the first and third mode. So, you are getting but mass is m 1 and m 2. So, m 1 evaluated at L by 4 phi 1, phi 3 is also at L by 4 because m 1 is located at L by 4. m 2 the second mass phi 1 is evaluated at L by 2, phi 3 is evaluated at L by 2 because M2 is placed at L by 2 and its value is coming as minus 1.5. Similarly, B prime 2 1 and equal to B prime 1 2 because of symmetry and the diagonal other diagonal terms B prime 2 2 is M1 uh, phi 2 square plus m2 phi 2 square, but 
this phi 2 is calculated at L by 4 and L by 2 and its value is coming as 1. B prime 2 3 interaction between second and third mode but this model values are calculated at L by 4 and at L by 2 where the mass is located. So M1 phi 2 L by 4 phi 3 L by 4 plus M2 phi 2 L by 2 phi 3 L by 4 and its value is 0 0.707. B prime 3 1 that is the third row first element equal to B prime 1 3 and B prime 3 2 equal to B prime 2 3 last diagonal element b prime 3 3 let us calculate m1 phi 3 square l by 4 plus m2 phi 3 square l by 2 and its value is 2.5 now we can form the matrix b because b matrix is nothing but the b matrix is nothing but summation of a unit matrix plus b prime matrix so first element of B matrix will be your say we have calculated say this is 2.5 so it will be 1 plus 2.5 that is 3.5 and B22 will be here say 1 plus 1 2 so like that we have calculated the B matrix you can see th this is B prime that we have got earlier and after adding unit matrix we now get B matrix as 3.5 0 0.707 minus 1.5 0 0.707 2 0 0.707 you can see the symmetry exists and the diagonal elements are all positive 3.5 to 3. .5. So this matrix is very well conditioned matrix. So there will be no difficulty in finding the eigenvalues. So now eigenvalues are formed. This is the matrix omega square by capital omega square that is a diagonal matrix of course and this is B matrix. So for non-trivial solution this determinant of this matrix omega square by capital omega square minus B matrix equal to 0. So here it is 3 by 3 determinant. So it is to be expanded after writing and you will get a characteristic equation in omega to the power 6. So we will solve for omega square uh, because 3 roots of omega square will be coming because it is uh, omega square cube that is a cubic equation in omega square. So therefore you will get 3 natural frequencies omega 1, omega 2, omega 3. So this is the procedure to handle a problem of beam carrying number of concentrated masses at any arbitrary locations. In summary, let me tell that we discussed a problem of combination of continuous and lump parameter system but this is only one topic. There may be other combination also that will be discussed in subsequent lecture beam carrying any number of concentrated masses at any arbitrary locations can be handled by this method. The method is due to U and Lin and was found to yield results close to exact values. Number of problems was discussed to observe the effect of concentrated mass on natural frequency of the beam, concentrated mass to beam mass ratio and number of multiple masses were included in the problem. Thank you very much. Thank you.